Hi there, and welcome to 106 Consulting. Today we're going to take a look at negative float. So what is negative float, and what does it tell us about the condition of your schedule? Technically speaking, negative float appears in a schedule when the early dates of an activity are later than the late dates. If we look at an activity represented as a precedence node, we can see an example of a negative float condition. You can see in this example activity node that the late dates are five days earlier than the early dates. In other words, during the forward and backward pass, the calculation revealed that the activity would have to start five days earlier than its earliest possible start date. In short, we've exceeded some important date along the critical path. During a forward and backward critical path calculation, the early dates are subtracted from the late dates to calculate float. In this example, the early date of April 15th has been subtracted from the late date of April 10th, leaving negative five days of total float. How is this possible? How can we calculate an early date that falls after a late date? In every case where you see negative float in a schedule, it will be due to a constraint somewhere on the critical path because constraints place hard early or late dates on activities. Let's take a look at how this works in a typical Gantt chart schedule. In this diagram, you can see that there are three activities that currently have some float on them. This is represented by the yellow box on each activity. They have float because there is a constraint on activity C. But in this first diagram, the finish on constraint date is set later than the currently scheduled late finish date of activity C. Therefore, some float exists for activity C and its predecessors. So what will cause negative float in this situation? Let's say the project has started and some of the preceding activities are beginning to slip. When this happens, the float will start to be used up. First, activities A through C become critical as their float drops to zero. If the project continues to slip, the activities become supercritical with a negative float value. The finish on constraint on activity C has been exceeded. You can see the negative float pushing back through the preceding activities. The calculated early dates are now calculating a date later than the finish on constraint date. The constraint has locked the late finish date, so a negative float condition has appeared in the schedule. In short, you now have less than zero days to complete this work. Therefore, if you see negative float on your schedule, it indicates that a constraint date has been exceeded. If this constraint was an appropriately applied constraint, say a contractual delivery date, your project is now going to miss that date. Therefore, Negative float is an early warning that you will fail to meet an important delivery date in your schedule. So in many respects, negative float is an early warning tool to help you manage the problem before it happens. However, from a scheduling best practice standpoint, it's important that you never have negative float appearing in your preliminary baseline. This would indicate that you are planning to miss an important deadline in your schedule before you have even started work. You are in essence planning to fail, and your schedule doesn't reflect a realistic approach to the project. Negative float should only occur in a schedule after the work has started and progress is being reported. So, if you are using constraints in your schedule, particularly hard constraints, you should check for negative float before baselining your plan. If you'd like to learn more about Primavera P6, then 106 offers some great online training courses. These courses are written by industry experts and offer you all the skills you need to get up and running as a P6 scheduler. For more information, visit our website at 106.com for full details on how to get started.